All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Sean Newman Podcast. Tonight, we have our guest in studio, Greg Buchanan, um, as I love to do. Um, he is a, a proud husband and father of two. Uh, he's been vice president of the CPCA now for... A couple of years, yeah. A couple of years, but you've been around the CPCA well, for yeah, quite a few. for as a radio guy for 14 years and then covering it for, well, we don't get into that, but a long time. And, uh, you know, great friends with that and one of many things. That's right. Yeah. Well, and then, I mean, my fondest memories of you are CKSA, seeing you as a sports guy, dating hey, you a hey, bit. Hey, I apologize if you're listening and you are one of the few people that only had two channels. <laughs> And, 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 and stuck you, with you. And, you. and you had to sit there and watch me uh, at supper or late night cast. Hey, I apologize. And I had some bad suits and ties back then, too. And the hair wasn't that great. So, um, Some cool things that I, I hopefully we get into is you wrote a chapter in Rob Peterson's yep, book, yep. Uh, Heart and Soul of the a- SJHL, not yeah, the yeah. AJ, the yeah, SJ yeah, back yeah, when yeah. The, the Lancers were a part of that league. Yeah. And uh, and then you covered the Pan Am Games too. Yeah. I, I I know that was a fond memory of yours. Yeah. Um, and then of course you were the the general manager of the Border Kings when they won it twice in two thousand one, two thousand seven. Yeah. You went across seas with them to Europe. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Surprised uh, that some of us got back, but <laughs> we won't get into that. But yeah. <laughs> And then, of course, uh, currently you're the uh, GM of the Lloydminster Bandits. Yes. And I know you're eager to uh, talk about maybe the, yeah. the shitstorm that's going on right now. There is, well, I hopped in the vehicle this morning. I was driving out to work, and it just so happens it comes up. So maybe you want to just give a little background and... and yeah, there's there's a couple of things that happen, and and it, it stems back from our game three in our first round series against the Kill 'Em Weak Kings, and uh, it's a game we won in overtime. <laughs> it's just a, unfortunately now that kind of gets lost in everything. Uh, there was a fight on the ice involved Jackson Payne and a Kill 'Em Weak King player. Uh, they had a fight, and, and unfortunately sometimes when you have a fight, is you're you're a player too, and. and the aftermath of that fight sometimes can injure a player. As I say, the Killam player landed on Jackson Payne the wrong way. Jackson was, his legs were kind of spread at the time. The Killam player lands on top of him. Uh, Jackson suffers a ruptured hamstring. Uh, he had internal bleeding on his leg. Uh, it, 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 very, very serious injury. Uh, his dad, his brother, his mom, and all his cousins are, are watching that happen uh, and and very emotional like we we all get emotional that's what, why we love hockey so much and uh, he gets taken to the emergency ward uh, his family felt that the the linesman didn't do a proper job in breaking up the fight resulting in Jackson getting injured uh, there was you know a, a few words said to the referee uh, and then about roughly about 45 minutes after the game, uh, we had security everywhere in the rink. As a bandits organization, we're responsible uh, for the well-being of the visiting team as well as the officials, and we made sure that we were taking care of that at that time. Uh, 45 minutes after the game, uh, it, allegedly the, the Paynes uh, walked into the referee's room and uh, had a verbal altercation with the official, which came, became physical. Um, Again, uh, no place in the game for that. Um, you know, I understand the passion. I'm a father too, and and if I see my son go down, I would get upset too. But there's a fine line. Uh, I just kind of look at it as, you know, not not saying that this, you know, belittling what happened. But when when a story like this gets released into the Lloydminster media, gets released to our city from the Lloydminster RCMP, and again. My registration's good and my driver's license is good, so I can probably say this and the, and the police can pull me over, whatever. Uh, but seriously, when the Lloydminster RCMP released this as a, as a major news story, when we have so many other things going on uh, illegally in Lloydminster, let's just say that, that this gets priority, I, I, I just, I don't understand it. Um, you know, and, and right now it's in the legal, it's in the courts, and it's out of our hands now, and it's in the court's hands. So hopefully that... I don't know. For me, it, when it got released uh, on Monday, I, I I had a bad feeling where this was going to go. I'm a former member in the media. Well, still am kind of. And I, I knew it's going to, as we say in the media business, it's going to grow legs and run. And, and it ran. And it ran across the country. And, and not a word of a lie. Uh, when that news release was sent out about 2 o'clock, by 2.30, I had phone call after phone call after phone call from right across the country, from media outlets, from newspapers, radio stations, TV stations, looking for a comment. And uh, 
me for, apologize to all the media people that try to get hold of me as a former media guy, but I did not answer one phone call, and they all went to my voicemail. So, and that's that's where we're, where we're at right now with it, and uh, you know, where whatever happens in the court will happen in the court. So hopefully that answers things. Yeah, I, yeah, I know we, we talked about this, and yeah, we, we talked off air. I, I I wasn't at the game. Yeah, I certainly didn't see what happened. I certainly wasn't downstairs when whatever happened there yep. happened um coming from a, a hockey standpoint anytime you go down the optics of it or just doesn't matter what happened no. it just doesn't do anything good no no it's going to have a bad result right the end result you got to think of your actions before you take those actions and and sometimes we don't and we have that passion and you know, as a father seeing his son hurt, you, you you know, I can understand that. I'm a father. If my son was hurt, I, I, I would get upset too. But, you you know, it, it to each his own. And now they'll be going to court, and I wish them all the best. I was asking you on the way here. We didn't really get into it. Is it, like, I'm trying to remember in my hockey career a time where the police got involved or they had to get involved. Yeah. And I'm I'm just... The only thing I can think of, and it's not to make light of this situation at all, yeah. is uh, back when I played uh, junior out in Dryden. It's my first year there. We were a bunch of young kids, and up to no good, right? You get a bunch of young kids in a <laughs> on the road away on, from home. That's yeah, right. Yeah, we're yeah. sitting in Dryden, which you know, no offense to Dryden, but you're up in yeah. the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a great town. Love playing there. Yeah. And uh, I remember we uh, we were getting skated one practice. Larry was was skating us really hard, and nobody kind of knew why. We thought, well, we've been kind of stinking it, but we've been stinking it most of the year. We were yeah. middle of the row pack, yeah. and then he lined us all up on the red line uh, on the goal line, <clears throat> and two cops walk in, Uh-oh. and we're all like, yeah. what the what the hell's going on here? All right, Larry goes over there, and he made us sit there. Nobody moved an inch, right? And he sits there and talks to him for about ten minutes, and he comes back, and then. As I've told the listeners before, when Larry skates us, he's got his Calgary Flames hat on. And uh, he goes, well, isn't that something? Looks like somebody was buying off a narc. Jeez. Oh, so then, yeah. I don't know if it's true. I, yeah. I got him on the podcast yeah, here yeah. in a couple of weeks. I'm going to ask him if that's true. <laughs> because I go, well, I, I wasn't buying off the narc. I don't know what the yeah, heck he's yeah. talking about. Probably at that time, I didn't know what a narc was. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, bought what? Like, yeah. you know? And so we ended up skating. He brought out the puke buckets. It was a nasty, oh, nasty no. practice. Let me tell you, I uh, I was a good boy the rest of that year, and I don't <laughs> think I was the one being the bad boy. See, for me, um, growing up in Regina, and we'll kind of get into my my days in Regina. You know, my hockey wasn't that great, and, but I did play the beautiful junior B hockey in Regina, <laughs> and and and, and Regina is a bit of a it's safe to say a bit of a rough city. Um, and the only time, and, and I forgot about this, and I talked to one of my former teammates that, that reminded me on the weekend of this happening. Um, one of our goalies was, as authorities say, was known to authorities. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're getting ready. I don't know if it was regular season. We forget about that. But it knocked on the door looking for this goalie. He drove a stolen car to the rink. <laughs> And it was money. What what happened my later? Jason, my buddy, was telling me. Well, what they used to do was used to steal stereos, and, and then they got well instead of stealing stereo, just take the car. <laughs> so, yeah. So he was known to authority. So we were we were minus one goalie going into a game. So, how did the team deal with that? <laughs> well, like, you can't even remember it. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I can just I can't imagine. Remember it? I can't remember it. Uh, you know, it, it's just. Was not good. Yeah, so it wasn't great. <laughs> no, it wasn't great. Old for the Billy team. <laughs> over there, he got he got capped again so the, for stealing a car. So the backup's going, oh, awesome! I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah, uh, and you might be in for a while because I don't think <laughs> we're going to see Billy for a bit. So. <laughs> uh, the team you played for was the Silver Foxes. Yeah, yeah. Do you know where that name came from? Don't have a clue, but we, we were. I, I guess they came back to. Uh, they they kind of disbanded for a while and. They, and they came back lately, and uh, we were shitty then. And they're, they're I'd like old. to point out, I was going to get Bucky to swear on here once, and <laughs> like, I just got him. Oh, see, yeah, we were talking about the off topic. We were talking about this, and then there's when the, there's a microphone in front of me, I'm conditioned not to swear. And I've had friends in the business that unfortunately did and got a little bit of trouble. Uh, so I'm always conditioned 
not to swear. So but I you know. get welcomed into the podcast studio. <laughs> you know, I throw a doctor. Uh, Bucky doesn't drink, folks. So tonight, yeah, yeah. instead of a scotch like we had with Shepard, we're having a, do- a nice cold glass of Dr. <laughs> Pepper. And the Dr. Pepper's got them all fired up. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> the reason I asked about the Silver Fox is I looked it up because I went, Silver Foxes, that's kind of an odd name. Now, I'm no yeah. rocket scientist. Maybe there's a ton of Silver Foxes yeah. in Regina. I didn't yeah. know, but I, Silver Fox I always thought of as a good-looking older man, and I went, well, that's <laughs> Good Regina. name for a senior team or an old-timer's that's team, That's right, right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I looked it up, and... Uh, Named after Al Ritchie, the Silver Fox. Oh, yes. Okay. It, it, Al Ritchie Arena. Al Ritchie, I think, played Montreal Canadiens. Uh, I didn't see anything about the Canadiens. He did uh, fight in the First World War. Okay. Uh, he was manager of, uh, coach of the Vice Senior Hockey Team in 1921. They won the Western Canadian Championship. I think that was before yeah. the Allen Cup came yeah, and, out west. And the right? arena is named after him where the Silver Foxes play. Okay. The Al Ritchie, now it's called the Community Centre in... One of the really nice areas of Regina. Fair enough. <laughs> it's just, I gotta say that it's, uh, yeah, it's one of those neighborhoods that uh, I wouldn't leave your car running for long. So. <laughs> well, it went on to say that he, let's see here, he won, they won, uh, he won a hockey team in 1921, then he won the Western Canadian Championship in 21 mm-hmm. and 22. I was named coach of the Regina Pats junior hockey team in 23 24. Oh, yeah. Organized the past junior uh, football team in 25, winning the Western Championship for the next four years and the Canadian Championship in 1928. He was the only man in history to have won a national championship in both. It then went on to say he uh, Al Ritchie coached the Regina Rough Riders and headed east. So for all my Rough Rider fans. There we go, yeah. Al Ritchie coached the Regina Rough Riders and headed east for the Grey Cup in 28... 28- 30, 31, and 32, and he officially retired in 35. He later became a scout for the New York Rangers and helped the junior Flin Flon Bombers and Lethbridge teams to join the Rangers farm system back in the day. Wow. See, back in the day, the Regina Pats were the farm team for the Montreal Canadiens. Way back in the day. Wow. Yeah, so that, that, that dates me. That's more than I knew about. All I knew about El Ritchie, that a, arena was named after him, and I hated running the stairs. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, and, I, and I ran the stairs at that rink a few times with the, the old hockey bag over top of your shoulder, and you, you had a bad game. You, you put the, sho- the hockey bag on, and you ran up and down the stairs. Oh, man, that'd be brutal. Yeah, yeah it was brutal. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I Google it. I just I went <laughs> Silver Foxes. That seems it seems yeah. seems like not a very unique – it seems like yeah. a very unique name. Sorry, yeah. not a not a unique yeah. name, a very unique name. And uh, first thing that popped up on Google is the story of the Silver Fox is obviously somebody else had the same thought I did. Yeah. No, and I, and I didn't play there long uh, because then I decided to get on with uh, my education and uh, went to the University of Regina. So I, I quit because I wanted to concentrate on school, which I dropped out of the University of Regina anyway. So that didn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. So then my question is. So you played hockey midget AAA, which yeah, yeah, yeah. by all standards is yeah. pretty good. You played yeah, yeah. junior B, which by all yeah, standards yeah, is pretty yeah. good. Yeah. When did you fall in love with the media and wanting to get involved on talking sports, or is well, that something that you just you grew up enjoying? Well, I, you know, like any kid growing up, you, you, you watch Hockey Night in Canada. And this is, you know, before your time, uh, Hockey Night in Canada consisted of Montreal Canadiens, Toronto Maple Leafs, Vancouver Canucks. Yep. And, and, and you watched it every Saturday. It was tradition in the Buchanan house that uh, – uh, there's three things we watched all the time. Wayne and Schuster, Tommy Hunter, and Hockey Night in Canada. <laughs> all in that order, kind of. Uh, Hockey Night in Canada, more at the top. But, uh, yeah, so like, you grew up watching it, uh, and and then you're, you know, doing play-by-play in the driveway and everything like that. But, honestly, when I when I decided to go into media, I was just, you know, I was in the University of Regina. I was taking first-year science. So I was going to become a pharmacist, you know, and I had a friend that was going to become a dentist. He did become a dentist. I I kind of went the other route, and it took me a while to, to make a living off of what I wanted to do. But all serious, and if I, I you know, had good enough marks and I was going to become a pharmacist, and, and I kind of got the first year of university and uh, not even made it to Christmas, and I said, this is, this I can't do this. Like, it's boring. And my dad and my grandfather are very influential in my, my life. My grandfather is a former politician, served under Tommy Douglas at CCF, and I'm, I'm, a lot of me is from him because he was a very outgoing guy very personal guy and he always used to tell me find something you want to do don't do something that people want you to do so like kind of that is this in the back of my mind i want to do something that i want to do so i i wanted to be a, a disc jockey not a sports guy i wanted to, <laughs> to go there and play music i was a guy that played you know, lay down the beat yeah yeah and i was 
you know, just like a kid, you had your cassette recorder and and you and you did the mixtapes, right? And yeah. that, that was me. I, yeah. I, I did a lot of mixtapes, and and then you back timed songs, you know. So back timing as in the start of the song, and you're trying to say what you have to say before the lyrics kick in. That's back timing, <laughs> and, and and I thought that was cool, and I it was back timing. So I went to I, I kind of wondered where where I could go for broadcasting and. WABC. It's a small little broadcasting school out of Saskatoon. They're still in business now. And, and it's only a four-month course where some of these other courses were like two years long at Nate and Satan. And uh, so I enrolled to WABC, went up there. Um, and it's in one of the, like, Avenue F in Saskatoon. So if you know Saskatoon well, any avenue that has a letter before it, not a great end to Saskatoon. So, so I, I can remember showing up there. And, and it was the, I took the evening course because there was a day course and evening course. I took the evening course and there's prostitutes on the corner and I'm just kind of parking, <laughs> walking my way to, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to college. Uh, so I did, I did four months there and, and, and met some great friends there and, and had fun. And more than anything, uh, it, it kind of gets you ready for your, for the business. And, and I kind of knew I wasn't going to get paid a lot in my first job or first few jobs. And uh, so I was prepared. I got my tape together. Uh, I finished, you know, school, and I think it would have been May. And uh, didn't think I was going to get it. And they say, hey, it could be six months to a year before you get a job. So, That's right. Yeah. So find something that you, that you can do. So a friend of the family's had a nightclub in Regina. So I did DJ in that Saturday night. And I thought, this is awesome. This is what I want to do. I want to be a DJ in a nightclub. Uh, which is stupid, but uh, so I, 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 I did. Hey, Maz, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Maz, he didn't mean it. Okay, <laughs> no, but you're not in a nightclub. I was in a real bad nightclub, Maz. <laughs> so, uh, so I was in this nightclub called Checkers in, in Albert Street, Regina. And, and the, the ironic thing about this, I wasn't even drinking age yet. So, how does that work? I was, I was 18 at the time, so I wasn't even 19 yet. Yeah, how does that work that I'm actually night? being a DJ in a nightclub that I'm I'm actually not even supposed to be in that nightclub, but friends of the family got the job, did it for one Saturday. That Monday, I got a phone call from a radio station in Shonovan, Saskatchewan, which I had to look, I'm a Regina boy. I didn't even know where the hell Shonovan was. (laughs) That's like most of us, Saskatchewan. You get told you're going (laughs) somewhere in Saskatchewan. Where where is that? Yeah, I'm I'm gone. So I I went there, did a job interview uh, on that Wednesday, got hired and never DJed in a nightclub again. And I started. So you went from, I want to DJ the rest of my life, <laughs> to within like three days going, well, got a job offer, I'm out of here. <laughs> so, but, but, but then again, I was going there to do the morning show, uh, to play music, country station, a small little radio station, Shonovan, Saskatchewan, only on the air from six to noon. And, and then the Swift Current station takes over. So we were a satellite station to the Swift Current station. And, and I, I did, so I went to Shonovan and gotten, you know what? I, I stayed there for almost over a, over a year, close to a year and a half, which is unheard of in that market. They usually say, yeah, the guy will be here six months. But I, I had fun. I, I got to play in a little hockey there too and, and did play-by-play of everything. And the experience I got there was great because I did, I did play-by-play of curling on radio. Who has play-by-play for curling on a radio in Shonovan? In Shonovan, the Shonovan Super League. Every Thursday, I had a, a old guy. I can't remember his name now, but <laughs> an old guy that. And, and the the funny thing is, we brought his first name is Jack, and I can't remember. It's a Ukrainian name. Uh, but we brought him on board, and he was an old guy that could. You could put a mic in front of him and walk away because he would just hold it and he would just keep on talking about whatever. We brought him on for parades. We actually did parades on radio. How do you do a parade on radio? It's beyond me, but we did. And, and then he would come on and do curling too because he was a big curler. The only bad thing with Jack, Jack would like to drink quite a bit. <laughs> so Jack would start having a couple of shots here before the game gets going, and it's the, the game of the night, and we would do it. And then about third, fourth end, he has a few more. And seventh end, I, I can't find Jack. <laughs> So about the 8th and ninth end, on 10th end, I'm pretty well by myself because Jack is over with his friends and forgot you, that he's doing radio tonight. <laughs> so. Had you at least curled so you knew oh, what yeah, that, you were talking about? Well, that's a thing where uh, mom and dad curled a lot. Okay. And, and I was kind of a curling rink rat. So I, I knew the 4 foot, 8 foot, 12 foot. I, I knew the intra, intern, out turn. I knew all that. So, But to relate that to radio for a guy that's been in the business for, well, what week is it? And uh, I, I, you know, to be able to hold that, and guys in Swift Current heard that, and they're like, "Ooh, 
the guy does radio. He does curling on radio. That's it's pretty awesome. So, uh, so I turned some heads in Swift Current through curling of all things. But we did that. I did high school football. We did high school. I think that year was a high school volleyball because there's a provincials there. Oh, yeah. So I did high school volleyball on radio. On radio. Yeah. So it was fun. You know what? I'm uh, married to a volleyball player. Yeah. And uh, in college, they were good. And it was the funnest sport to go watch. Oh, yeah. And everybody always jokes that it was the girls in the in the short shorts. But, like, they were talented. And yeah. it was quick and back and forth. And, yeah. And when you got two competitive teams, like, they can really go. Well, and, and even back then in Shonovan, the high school football was big. And, uh, you know, the Gully climb. Was it uh, was it 11-man or 6-man? Do you remember? No, it definitely wasn't 11-man. Uh, so it was 6-man. Yeah, it was 6-man. So it, it's constant. Like, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a track meet. And, and it, it was fun. I had no clue about six man until I interviewed Dad on here, and then he started talking about six man, and I was like, "They do, like they do what?" Oh yeah, and like I don't know how you take a break in that sport. Well, I, I don't think you do, and and just big farm boys, and yeah. the linemen were huge. Yeah, um, I can remember because it, and the technology has changed quite a bit. Like so, this this is like in late eighties, and so we didn't have the technology I have now. So like we're when we had a phone line hooked up at the football field, it was like to the telephone pole and and you just you know you didn't have the luxury of cell lines or anything like that so it there was some you know uh, i remember one time actually it's a funny incident so the guy that was doing color with me is another guy that was on air with me kenny Ad- and ken ken's a big man and and our play-by-play uh location was in the front seat of a truck <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, as good as you get, right? Uh, and, and Kenny, uh, moving around, couldn't get comfortable, and hit the gear shift over top of the steering wheel, and we started rolling down the hill. And, and we were worried about the phone line's going to snap because we only have so much give to it. So we finally f- pushed the brake and, 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 and trying to do play-by-play and not lose a beat while you're rolling down the, the hill at the same time. so Why couldn't you have that audio? Oh, God. Uh, yeah, you're going to have audio for me later. That's kind of hilarious, too. No, but, but that would have been perfect, oh, rolling down a hill well, trying to but, do but you a don't football record, game. But you don't record anything back then. Well, like, honestly, enough, right? You know? Yeah, and I have to say, like, Sean even gave me so much experience. Uh, I, was, I was fortunate enough that because of our satellite station at Swift Current, I, I filled in to do news because that, that's what they were kind of thinking I was going to be good at. You know, you're going to do news, uh, you get a good read, uh, you know, you're young, you're smart enough. So I, I, I filled in and did news, and then I think it was one, even a, maybe a Tuesday or Wednesday, I forget what it was, but it was early in the week, and uh, Garth McTerry, who was the news director in Swift Current, now he's working for CBC Regina, and, and uh, just gets a phone call, and he's, I can hear him swearing from his office, and he's dropping F-bombs left and right, and Okay, say well, I didn't say enough bomb there. But. <laughs> so I, I, I was going, oh, something's up. So I'm like, oh, what did I do? But, you know, so I'm a little bit scared. I, I, I screwed up on a story or something. And you, I, I hear him yelling, you can and get in here. So I you know, go in there. I was like, oh, crap. So I'm like, oh, I'm done. I guess I'm going to go back to Regina and do the nightclub thing. And uh, he goes, hey, you ever do baseball? I said, baseball what? He goes, you, you ever do play-by-play baseball? No. I just, like, started, like, six months ago. And he goes, you know baseball? I said, yeah, I played it, watch it, big fan. You're a new play-by-play guy. So <laughs> that's it. There's, the sports director just quit. And, and they had the Swift Current Indians back then. Now I think they're called the 57s. Um, and they played pretty good baseball. They played against Montana and teams like that. And so I was a play-by if guy. You aren't the story of just get started and good things just come along if you start start moving that way, right? Like, yeah. I mean, you're in small town Shonovan doing curling and all of a sudden, you get a call from the wow, well, not the big yeah, times, like, but but I mean, yeah, yeah you're going it, up in the world, yeah, yeah. And the, the great thing for that is is you had a color guy for home games, which is awesome. But when you went on the road, you're by yourself. And I, you know what? If there's any sport I would go back and do in a heartbeat and do play by play with, baseball would be it. really. I I I'm I'm a huge baseball junkie. And, and, and people don't realize that because of my hockey, my chuck wagon. Well, this is perfect then because I was talking to Mr. Maz earlier today, yeah. <laughs> and he wanted to know our thoughts. And I was, I was, I yeah, meant yeah, to ask yeah, you earlier yeah, if yeah, you were yeah. into baseball, but this is perfect. Huge, huge. Well, the MLB is talking about proposing some rules, so let's let's uh, a little current trivia here, okay. not trivia, yeah, but yeah. they're talking about putting in a couple different rules. I wrote down what I consider four that yeah. are big, okay. and I'll see what your thoughts are. So the MLB proposed rules for the next season or two 
is a universal DH. So getting away from the National yeah. League, not having a pitcher's hit. Yeah, yeah. Shorten commercial breaks by 30 seconds and an ad split screen so that, from what I understand, you could run two ads simultaneously so the MLB can still get its money. Well, you're kidding. Like, this is on TV screen or yes. at the ballpark? I'm assuming at the TV screen. Wow. And I, I was like, well, I don't, I don't know how that works. Cause so you have, a, you have a top one and a... And and a, a I don't know. And a top one and a bottom one, or side by side, and just have the plate and the, and the batter there. I, I, I don't know. Oh. I, I twenty second pitch count, so now pitchers yeah, can't delay. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And three batter minimum for pitchers. So now you can't bring in a lefty just for the one hitter, and then switch them out right away. I don't know if I like that. I, I you know what? Because if it, come playoffs, it becomes huge, right? So that's where I go with it. I yep. go sure for all of them. Honestly, I like the pitchers hit, and I like that it adds in a little bit. I know everybody yeah, wants the I big know. slugger, and the pitcher can't hit, but it adds a dimension to the game. Oh, it does. But, but come playoffs, but but you have some some pitchers that are just they're hacking away, <laughs> like it's bad. Like they might as well be. But isn't killing. that part of it? They, isn't that as... part of the game where you, you you go, okay, he's been pitching one hell of a game, yeah, but we got a guy on first. None away, and he's up. Are we pinch hitting for him and bringing in relievers? Yeah, early there's or? more strategy to it. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I, I was fortunate. I coached a little ball too. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, coached girls fastball. And, did you really? And, yeah, I did. Uh, with the what have been in the Blues and the organization, Tracy yep. Harvey kind of recruited me. And Tracy I, Harvey coached uh, coached me at a young age. Oh, really? See, yep. me and Freddie Surratt coached a, a team one year. And oh, no the, kidding. The, in, in girls fastball, there's so much strategy that goes into it huh. that you really have to be a couple of steps ahead. Well, you come the, the the Newman boys. I always joke my baseball career was not very good. I got to play a little bit in in college, but I grew up playing fastball. We won two westerns and got coached by Deb MacArthur. Got to okay, play with yeah, like yeah. Clark in a young age. But that group of kids, right around Clark age, who was a year older than me, every year I was with that group. We won provincials, summer games, yeah, westerns twice, and it was Deb and Tracy Har- uh, Deb MacArthur and Tracy Harvey that oh, coached yeah. us two yeah. women, and they were fantastic. Yeah. Up until our last year, then it was uh, uh, Harvey that coached us. I'm forgetting his name. Oh, okay. But anyways, that's yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I'm going off topic here. But yeah, uh, so I'm a big baseball guy, and and my team, uh, it pains me at times. But although they've been good of late, there's the Cubs. So I've been to Wrigley a number of times. I've been to the I have you know what seen the White Sox play, but not at the new ballpark. I've been to Old Comiskey, and and I got a story from there because. We mean uh, it would have been Darren Rathwell who used to do news here, and and Darren wasn't really a baseball guy, but I convinced him to come with me, and and we went down to Chicago and watched the Cubs play one night, and then watched the White Sox play the next night, and, and we're sitting in the left field bleachers, and this is old old Comiskey, like this is this is a bad ballpark, like it's disgusting, and we went in there, we're sitting in the left field bleachers, and stuff is dripping on us, and I was like, oh, it must have rained here. And we're like, Darren's going, oh, it's, so when did it rain here? And we're talking to one of the guys, oh, that's not rain. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> so, and like, we went to the one of the washrooms in the left field bleachers there. And, oh, my God, you might as well be an outside Biffy because it, it was disgusting. It was bad, eh? Yeah, and you know what? And we're driving around there, and I got Saskatchewan plates. And this is in the day, and we're on the west side of Chicago. Again, not exactly the ideal place. And it's just like out of the movies. Like, there's apartments, and there's a... You know, a metal can there with a fire, and it's like, oh, and we're kind of lost, so we're like, no, nah, nah, we're not going to get directions. We'll just find our way out. <laughs> Although I, I played a, a joke with Darren. Uh, we're at Chicago Stadium. Again, not a great neighborhood of sh- Chicago, so I told him to get out and we'll get pictures. Um, and uh, I, I dropped him off. I said, I'll be, be right back. I just kind of drove down the street and kind of watched him panic a bit. <laughs> About 15 minutes later, I finally came and, yeah, he was a little bit He panicked. was a little bit uh, tiffed at you for that a, one? A little tiffed at that, yeah. So what you're saying is, then, going back to this, you would yep. gladly take the universal DH? Yeah. You would gladly take 20-second pitch count? Yeah, there's some human rain delays out there. You know, honestly, there's some pitchers out there that just slow the game down so much that it, it's it's frustrating to watch. Don't you think? I don't, I don't know if I, 
baseball is meant to be a long game. They're trying to like shorten it up, right? And I get, I get regular, yeah. I get regular season. I could, I could yeah. see where you, you try and it's 162 regular season game, um, season game schedule. It's a lot yeah. for any fan. Yeah. I don't care who you are. So if you want to speed up regular season, I can get, I can, I can handle 20 seconds. I can handle three batter minimum for pitchers. I don't know if that speeds it up any. I suppose it does because you're not switching pitchers in and out. I don't know if I love Universal DH because I kind of like the two different leagues, just having that different flavor, and I like yeah. the 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 management that goes into yeah. switching players and having to make a decision. But come playoffs, I don't know if any fan really gives two craps about <laughs> how long a pitcher takes to throw the baseball. No, I, I know there's some pitchers out there that it is frustrating to watch, you know, and and I understand where baseball's trying to go, and 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 baseball's trying to make the game. That people that are, are marginal fans get yes. more attached. Get more and, and attached. So you got to package the game together in, in a timely manner that people know that hey, this is how long this game's going to take. And, and and so I understand it. And I, the funny thing is, I'll be watching a game at home, and I love my wife to death, and she's a she she puts up a lot with me. But she always <laughs> when I'm sitting and watching a baseball game, how much time is left? Well, dear, it's like the seventh inning. Well, how much does that mean? Well, it's the seventh inning. I, I, I can't really tell you when it's going to be over. A baseball game is like the last three minutes of an NBA game. It just goes oh, on and on. Don't even get me started on. NBA. I guess. Yeah. It's, but but the thing is about a baseball game. I I'm not. A, I don't proclaim to be this giant baseball fan. I don't watch 160 games. Not even close. But yeah. come baseball playoffs. You can sit down and watch those games. Those are great, and I don't care how long they go because there's just no. there's so much there. You can feel it. Yeah, I am, I'm, when the Cubs won, uh, I sat there, watched every one of their playoff games, even when I was supposed to be working. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Chad, if you're listening. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so, like, I, I'm a baseball junkie, and, uh, I'm, and, you know, I don't get to see a lot of the games as much as I want to. Uh, my summers are usually pretty busy. But uh, so I don't I don't DVR it. I, I just kind of watch highlights. So oh, fair enough. Yeah. Well, going back to your broadcasting. Yeah. So you, you go from you bounce from Shonovan. You're doing a little bit of Swift Current. Yeah. How do you make your way up to Lloyd? So this is the ironic thing that happened with Lloyd. There was a pit stop in in Sask in Saskatchewan uh, CTV. Uh, so talent miracle back in the day used to go out to different media outlets and have a celebrity panel or you go there and you answer the phones on the stage and and you do a little wave and they introduce where you where you're from and stuff like that i don't think they do that anymore but they did that back in the day and it was in regina so it was you know hey i'll, I'll sign up for it because i'm gonna be home anyway uh so i signed up for it sitting in the green room with a few other guys one of the other guys that was sitting there with was a very good friend of mine is pete lobardius so peter is of course known to everybody in Sportsnet and does games with the Flames on radio now. And that's right, yeah. yeah. So Pete and I are, that's how we go way back. Like, Pete got his break in Estevan, and we kind of kept in touch since then. And uh, But, yeah, we were sitting there. Pete finished his shift. I came in, so we're just saying bye to each other. And then this other guy comes in from Yorkton, and he's like the news director or whatever from Yorkton, and I don't know him from Jack. Uh, and so we got talking, and he says, hey, uh, you know what? We think we're looking for somebody on uh, TV. And I'm like <laughs> – Really? I, 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 I've never done TV. Well, you should, you know, you apply. And I didn't really think anything of it. And he, he says, give me your number. So I, he, he, you know, come Tuesday, he calls me. He says, come up for an interview on Thursday. So I, can you get the day off? So I told the bosses I had to take off and went up for it, did a tape. Like, you know, I've never been in a TV studio before. and Did a tape. I didn't get the job. Uh, they gave it to, to a female, uh, which happens many a times. <laughs> and uh, so... Didn't think anything of it, uh, but a month later, their sister stations in Prince Albert, and uh, so all of a sudden I get, hey, we're looking for a sports guy, and it's like, oh, okay, you interested? Sure, sure. Went up there, uh, got the job, and uh, started covering the Raiders. And the interesting thing for that, the sports director was Rob Anderson, who who I work with, and people know him as a referee and linesman uh, out here. And uh, be easy on Rob. You know, he's a nice guy. <laughs> Misses a call every once in a while, but you got to love the guy. Uh, but, yeah, so I got to uh, – and that's the ironic thing where it's, you know, now we're working together again. But I yeah, spent some time at CTV Saskatchewan and then just kind of wanted it something different. And a uh, job came opening in uh, Lloydminster, and I applied for it. And it, the day that I came in for the job interview was a story itself. But uh, because, uh, I had an interview with Brian Kilbank, who was the sports director of the job, and 
they were having a going away party for Dave Barry, who was leaving, and I was applying for his job. And during that uh, going away party, Brian Kilbank had a heart attack. So <laughs> he was supposed to have a job interview with me and uh, was in the emergency ward uh, dealing with a heart attack. Uh, so I ended up uh, uh, waiting around and waiting around and finally had a job interview with Ken Ruptash, who was the, the station owner and station manager. And uh, you know, about, a, about three or four days later, I got off for the job and I've been here since 89. So. Yeah, 89. And you, you to- told me, like, pretty much as soon as you took uh, the job, you were almost on the board with, with the Blazers. Or, well, it would have yeah. been the Lancers. At the no, time. it would have been the Blazers. would have been the Blazers? It would have been their second year in the AJ. So uh, Bob Deschamps coached the first year. Uh, the second year, Bob left after the first year, and Cal McDonald and Wayne Prestige took over as co-coaches. And uh, I don't know how it happened, but Bill Condro, I think I went to the rink to do an interview, and Bill Condro was the uh, president at the time. Willard Condro was a general manager, so they kind of talked to me, uh, asked me if I'd be interested in kind of helping out with the team. And so I, I became PA announcer. I became board member. Uh, later, my tenure with the Blazers became uh, kind of the road manager, so I booked all the hotels, booked all the meals. And, you know, it was kind of, in a way, it was awkward in many different ways because I was a broadcaster, yet I had personal relationship with a head coach like Boris Rebelka was a, still a good friend of mine Gore Thibodeau is another one that came through and we were very good friends so I was kind of in those offices where they're deciding you know who we're going to keep and who we're not going to keep yeah. and, and as a sports guy I can't really go on air and say hey we're going to trade away this guy you know so it was, yeah. it was kind of different small market right so you know and I it was some great times because you got to meet some great guys and uh, you know we had some we had some pretty good teams. We didn't have any great teams, but we had some great personalities. Like Andrew Hanna came through here. Mark Hallam was another guy. Uh, Scotty Pratt, who, of course, is still here. And Lee Siemens. And you know, the list goes on and on of great guys. Uh, Travis Barnes is a kid that came through here from Medicine Hat. You know, some good, solid hockey players. And Paul Isdale is another one. So just name after name that, you know, you think back to those days and hanging out with those kids. So it's kind of fun. What was uh, – I was wondering this. You've been around the – Lloyd Sports yeah. for well thirty years this year I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, was there a athlete who should have went somewhere but never did? Like, was there was there a guy that just sticks out in your mind that was um, was that good? Probably should have went somewhere with it, but never never went anywhere. Jim Born, Jim Born Jr. Um, and and Jim was a sensational hockey player. Uh, was one of the best draw men that I've ever seen in the AJ. And like, he played for the Blazers? He then? played for the Blazers. And, and he was one of the reasons why they won a first-round series against the Calgary Royals one year. Uh, did it himself. Like, it wouldn't lose a face-off. Good two-way player. Played the game right. Uh, and then was a sensational golfer. Uh, had the lead going in the final round of Saskatchewan Amateur here in Lloyd. And I was unable to hold on that lead. So he, he could do both. Uh, I don't know what kind of ball player it was, but uh, I know... He was a great golfer. He was a great hockey player. And, yeah, you know, and there's there's some underlining issues that, that uh, was the reason why Jim didn't go further. But, uh, you know, he played a little bit of Border Kings. Uh, I remember I spent some time with him in the emergency ward in North Battleford because he cracked two ribs in the back of, of his back uh, one night playing against North Battleford. And uh, I think that was pretty well in for his Border King career. So, so w- when would he have played for the Kings? Uh so it would have been, I'm trying to think that. Uh, like we're talking early 90s? Are we yeah, talking late 90s? No, it would have been, well, because I was running the Kings at the time. So it would have been, I don't I don't think it was 2001. It would have been maybe 2002, 2003. So did he win an Allen Cup with you guys? No, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. He wasn't part of that team. But he, he was a very good player, like very skilled. And anybody that, that you talk to, that you know, other players that played with him, and when you say the name Jim Bourne Jr., they will, oh, yeah. Uh, Jim he, Bourne Jr. He was something special. And I know there's some, uh, some younger people in the community who be like, who the heck was that? Yeah. Well, I'm one of them. I'm yeah, sitting yeah, here yeah, staring yeah. at you a little yeah. like, well, that's, that's yeah, the whole yeah. reason I asked the yeah. question, right? Yeah, I don't yeah. know what I expected to hear back. Yeah, but yeah. the fact you go Jim Bourne Jr. that quick yeah. tells me he must have been that good. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, he, he was as a kid, like I said, uh, I, I know J.P. Kelly coached. And it was kind of funny for, for a while there. The Blazers would have a coach, 
and by Christmas time, they would fire him and I'll bring back J.P. Kelly. So <laughs> J.P. Kelly was the Band-Aid for the, for, the, for the Blazers for so many years, and J.P. was a, such a good coach and, and just loved Jim. I, mean, I know he went to all ends to, to get Jim in the lineup. So, you know, that, uh, yeah, it was, you know. Would and, that have been when J.P. was just back from the show then? No, it would have been well after that. Well after yeah. that? He's just but, hanging around, and whenever they needed a coach, he'd just – Hey JP, come on out and yeah, and and he I remember when JP first comes into the dressing room and and he walks around the room and he shakes everybody's hands and if you ever shaken JP Kelly's he's hands, got giant hands. So you're a young 18, 19 year old kid and this coach shakes your hand. You're like, okay, he's got my attention. Yeah, he's got some mitts on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He ranks as one of my I think top three coaches I've ever had, uh, and. Two of the top three coaches was the year he coached me in Bantam. I played with his sons oh, in yes. Bantam, AAA or whatever the heck it was, AA. I don't think we had AAA and Lloyd at that time. I think it was AA. And it was him and Merv Mann they coached us, and it was it was a fantastic year. Yeah. But I remember his hands. His hands were meat hooks. Here's a story for JP. When he was coaching the Blazers, and I can remember playoff series against the Calgary Royals, and, and we were, of course, down there to Calgary for a couple of games. JP had film, you know, filmed the games, you know, and video the games. And this is long before – yeah, the video that we have nowadays, right? And you have it on VHS, and, and, and it's, so he'd be he'll be sitting Carting around a bag full yeah. of tapes. So he'd be sitting in his hotel room until the wee hours of the morning, breaking down game tape, way before they do it now. And they have guys actually in NHL teams, and for some junior teams, that's all they do is break down video. Yeah, tape. they're just game uh, tape. Yeah, guys. Yeah. So JP did that long before, and I remember him saying, "Yeah, I was up to about three or four, but uh, I'm good now." It's like, <laughs> what? Yeah, watching videotape. Yeah, was, you know, we're doing this and like, everything. He just picked apart everything and had those guys so prepared. I don't think those guys have ever been that prepared before. Hmm. So, that is a cool story. Yeah, yeah. So you go from the Blazers. Actually, talking about the Silver Foxes, do you do you know why they called them the Blazers or they were the Lancers? Was it just names they picked out? Because I know the Bobcats. They yeah, I remember they had that. Through, uh, well, in in a way. It was, yeah, they had a name the team contest, I think. Even yeah. for the Blazers, or are we talking Bobcats? Because yeah. I remember well, name the team contest see, for see the, Bobcats. See, but see, the Blazers were, is that kind of a carryover from, from the minor hockey days? Because, well, it might be, cause because that's the, what I grew up. Because they used to call the Border Blazers, right? Way back in the day. Way back in the day. Yeah, so, and, and I think it was Blazers was just kind of a carryover from, from minor hockey okay. to okay. the Junior A team. The Lancers, I'm not too sure of. Uh, you know, I, I wrote the chapter, and I almost forget kind of, they, they had a name the team contest, but... I don't even know how they kind of came up with the concept of Lancers. You know, like even back in the day, this is a story. When we were, I was in the board of directors of Blazers, and we were looking at making some changes. We just needed something different. You know, we were struggling on the ice. We, we need to do something different. And, and, and so one concept we were thinking about is changing the name of the team. So we, we're just banter, you know, do we have a name the team contest, but how are fans going to take that? We want to change the name of the team. You know, it'd be different if, it, you know, somebody's buying the team. And, you know, so it was kind of awkward that way. And there's names that we bantered about, like the, the Border City Buccaneers. Uh, you know, like, I don't know. There's too many things that rhymes with that. So it's like, you don't want to get into it. So they, they, the bizarre thing we ended up doing, and uh, I don't know if it was totally my idea, but we we changed the, the logo and we put, we had the, the Flaming Bee, but we put a bear on it. If you're seeing that that low, absolutely. I play. I remember when that came out. I, I I don't really know if that worked, but but we tried it, and uh, and then we changed the jersey the following year. We had flames coming up, and it kind of looked like a roller hockey jersey. Uh, so we tried different things, and and I know we bought this this mascot outfit, and we were thinking, okay, how do we incorporate this to the team? And they said, well, put them on the logo. Uh, I wasn't exactly really keen on that but it seemed to work and and now everybody wants that jersey i, I know it's, i talk to people there's uh, actually even last summer i had a couple of people say hey do you, do you ever have those blazer jersey with the big bear on it what did i ask you i said do we got any blazer jersey red ones because i need one for in here and i yeah. can't so if anybody's listening yeah. got a red blazer jersey i think i do like i don't know if i have a red one i have a few white ones yeah but i want a red one see i have a, a scott hartnell one yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- that yeah. Uh, that'll probably cost me something. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, cool. Well, then you go on and you you switch from the the Blazers over to the Border Kings. I mean, what a dream! 
team to go to. I mean, yeah. And you always, I mean, you mentioned this with the, with the band. It's, uh, I don't know if we mentioned it on air, but I know off here you talk about a lot, but about family yeah. and that being a real cornerstone. And I think it starts for you, or maybe it started earlier than that. But I know you always talk about it with the Border Kings yeah. and that group in probably one when you guys went all the way. Yeah, you know what? And so I come on board in one and Elmer Franks comes up to me and he, and he was running the team. He says, hey, I'm moving south. I need somebody to help run the team. Well, you know, are, are you interested in running the team? And I was like, I, you know, kind of had experience with the, with the Blazers to a certain extent. But I knew all the players, and, and they said, well, the players want you. So you know how a senior team works. <laughs> the, 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 as in a senior team, you don't have a board of directors. The players run the team. And, and they said, well, we'd like to buck you on. And I was like, and well, one, uh, the league schedule was just screwy. Uh, I won't, you know, played some shitty teams. Uh, I, I the, in 01, we won the Allen Cup, but we lost in the league. It, we lost the league final. We forfeited, so we didn't even that year. We won the Allen Cup. We didn't win the Big Four, which is kind of funny. <laughs> Why did you forfeit? <laughs> because we had to play against Coal Lake, and it didn't work in our provincial schedule, and they were being kind of dinks. You got to be kidding me! You know what? Uh, I I think it was I think it was Saint Walbrook. I heard I once again I don't yeah, know yeah. if this is one hundred percent true, but this year if they went to game. Seven against Wainwright. Yeah, oh, we yeah, had to that, either yeah. forfeit that or their provincial game against. I think they're playing Hafford. Yeah, I think or so. something yeah, along I mean, that yeah, lines. Yeah. I might be mixing yeah. up teams, and I was like, "That can't be true." Like, how does that happen? Yeah, so like, you're telling me that happened to yeah, the yeah, Allen Cup yeah, champs. Yeah, yeah, so so we and really like and honestly, uh, you know, the year before they had a good run for the Allen Cup, came up short, and, and th- their goal was Allen Cup. And, yeah. You know, and, and we looked at it. it. It's the big four is a bowling trophy. We're not interested. <laughs> you know, and it makes us sound like we're a bunch of you know, you know. And if, and if it didn't work out, no. Then... But uh, we did. So last year we did Saskia Provincials. I'm talking Helmond now. Yeah, Helmond yeah. Hitman. We did Saskia Provincials and and then tried for the Sask Elta. And this the Sask Elta, I can like, it's come a long way this league. Like it yeah. went from. Oh, yeah. I mean, as small as I think like four to six teams. Now yeah. you got fourteen. You're going as far as Meadow Lake yeah. to Elk Point to Wainwright. Um, so there's some driving involved. There's some big centers. Yeah. There's some good teams. And the crazy thing about it compared to most senior leagues is you play five, seven, seven, wow. and so it's a ton of hockey. Yeah. You go from playing a 19 game. Well, I think we played 16 games last year. Actually, mm-hmm. played a 16 game regular season. And then in playoffs, we went and played another 17 games plus two provincial games against Wilkie and Saskia Provincial. So we did 19 games, and it was something stupid. Like we did a best of seven without point. Yeah. Plus he tossed in two games against Wilkie in like a a two-and-a-half-week span. And your body just ain't meant to do that. So I... You you call it a bowling trophy, but I get yeah. what you're saying. What you're yeah. saying is is you had to choose one or the other. Yeah, you because, have to set your priorities. It, because I, you yeah. can you you do both. You end up with injuries. You end up with yeah. uh, guys getting tired. They can't get enough time off work, well, et cetera, et cetera. And then the other thing that came into play for us, we were playing against a Cold Lake team that was the base team. So these are just Air Force guys. We're, we're, they had full cages because of, because of their. I've heard about these guys. Yeah, and they're I, apologies to anybody from Cold Lake, but they were a shitty team. Like, I could take the, the Border Kings alumni team up there and beat them. And I'm not talking – I'm talking like Bill Armstrong, <laughs> the real alumni team, and we would probably give them a good run. So it, it was just a waste of our time. Every time we played against them, we were at double digits, and we had kind of a – you know, guys would have a bit of a wager. If you're on the ice for a goal, then it's you're going to have to buy a flat of beer for the boys after. And a little wager like that just to get through the game to make it, you know, at least somewhat competitive for us. Yeah. So – yeah, we had no interest in playing it and kind of said, screw it. We're, we're focusing on provincials, focusing on the Manitoba series because we hosted hosting Manitoba that year and then and then went out to uh, Sarnia, Ontario and, and played the Allen Cup. So. I can't imagine being – so did you you fold, uh, forfeit against Cold Lake? Yeah. <laughs> so you're Cold Lake. You've gotten beat, bumped on all year, and then all of a sudden the Allen Cup champ that year. You don't yeah, know yeah, that's yeah, going to yeah. happen. No, no. goes, uh, by the way, we're forfeiting. You guys can win. Oh, man, the so party I think what they did, I think what they did that year too is, is I think there was going to be another team playing against them, and I think they didn't even play against them. So like like yeah, so they they won the the banner and the trophy and and I think even to today I might have the trophy in my basement. Yeah, I think I do actually. 
<laughs> so, and I think I has the co light team uh, on, on the little You're banner. the jackass who didn't give him the trophy? No. Yeah. Well, no, they had it that year, but I think we won it since then. And, and uh, there's a few trophies in my basement that I that uh, I know my two sons kind of laugh about. They're like, do you have to return these, Dad? Because they look kind of old. <laughs> so let's talk about the 2001 Allen Cup. Because, I mean, I, I got to get a couple guys in here off of that yeah. team. But, I mean... Where did you go for that one? Sarny, Ontario. Yeah, Ontario. So the host team was Petrolia Squires. Yeah. Sponsored by a little bar. Petrolia was a suburb of Sarnia. Okay. Uh, you know, and again, uh, my first, you know, Allen Cup experience running a hockey team, you know, and, and being part of a hockey team. Because you cover it as a media, you, it's a little different perspective. Absolutely, you, yeah. You're going there is, is, is a guy that has something, you know, on the line. Invested in it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it, the one thing for every time in the Border Kings, in the, when I, we've been part of it is, and we talk about family, and, and, and the, we were not the best skill team. Never, never. In 07, we weren't the best skill team, but we were the best team. And, and, and we had just, everybody knew what they had to do. You know, if, if you were a third line guy, okay, you knew what you had to do. If you're a fifth or sixth defenseman, you knew what you had to do. Everybody knew their role. And I, I, I think I try to instill that with my young guys, with the bandits, and I, I don't think young kids understand that. They, they all want to be that guy. Well, you can't be that guy. You have to find what is best for you. you got to find the role that suits exactly, you. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. uh, and, and even in, in that Allen Cup, I, we played, uh, I want to say, I think it was Dundas in our first game. And oh, probably... Uh, maybe four minutes in, we were down two nothing, and we're like, "Ooh, this this might be a long week, boys." And then we came back, tied it up, and won that first game, and kind of rolled after that. And rolled after that. Yeah, yeah. And we should actually probably just clarify what the Allen Cup is, because I I got people who listen down in the states. I oh, guarantee yeah. they're sitting there going, "What are these guys talking about yeah, Allen yeah. Cup?" But Allen Cup is the oldest hockey trophy. Older that's than been, the Stanley Cup. That's yeah. right. Yeah, nineteen oh nine, I think. Yeah, nineteen oh nine. Yeah, like it's it's got a rich history. Yeah. Which is kind of, we talked about this off air. It seems like it's uh, in a little bit of trouble right now. Senior hockey in general is in trouble. Like, you know, you talk about the Sask Delta being strong, but, you know, outside of that, you look around, there's a lot of senior leagues that have three or four teams. Like, how do you have a four team league? Uh, and that's in Saskatchewan. You look in Alberta, there isn't a lot of senior leagues in Alberta anymore. Uh, it, I think there's three. Yeah. No, uh, four. Four? Yeah. And how many teams are there? I actually don't know. Rod Boutan, the president of our league, has told me before how many teams are in both provinces. Yeah. And it's quite a stark difference between the two provinces, to say the least. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. it actually kind of comes to another thing off you know, off topic. is like Rod Peterson and I, and Rod's a good friend, and, and we've talked about doing another book. And the next book we're looking at doing is The Life and Death of Senior Hockey. So you think it's, it's, it's going the way of the dodo bird? Well, I hope not. I hope not. I hope that other I, – I, I worry about the Allen Cup, and I worry that that is going the way. And well, it, the Allen Cup is tough, though, right? Like, I don't know. I hear about how much money is being spent, yeah. in, and I don't know if it's true, right? I mean, yeah. Nobody's showed me the books of how much money is no, no. being spent. But you hear the rumors about Rosetown, you hear the rumors about Bentley, and then you got to travel across Canada to go play in the dang thing, right? Yeah. I don't know if they're getting grants from the government to go do that. No, Probably not, no, no, right? No. So that's a lot of money. And, well, I don't know. A lot of money usually uh, leads to, unless you got some smart people at the top or a big backer, Yeah, that's a hard thing to keep running. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing with us and the Border Kings. You know, did we pay players at one time? There's a few players that did, you know, I'll be honest. But we didn't make a habit of it. You know, there were selected guys that got taken care of, let's just say. Yeah. Uh, was there money waiting for them at the end of the game? Not really, but we took care of them. We made sure that if you're giving up your time to come to us, we take care of you. So we, we had a Dwayne Dennis out of Vancouver that, you know, we had a great relationship with Wayne Russell and his plane, and we would pick up our players in Calgary, bring them into Lloyd to play their games, and then, and then take them back and then fly them back to Vancouver. So we took care of them that way. But we really didn't like. Didn't, there wasn't like a, a you know, envelope of cash waiting for a player in his lot. You know, like we we didn't do that because, again, it comes down to the board of directors, the players, yeah. and how do you how do you bring a guy in and pay him whatever when you have a Merv man who's one of the best defensemen I've seen in senior hockey. Uh, you have a guy like a Scott Hood. Uh, you have you know a Morgan Mann, all those guys that were legitimate 
stars in senior hockey, and they weren't getting. Yeah, paid. weren't getting paid a thing. So how do you? And do that's that? that's uh, if there's one thing I'm proud of in in Homeland, we've never yeah. paid anyone. I know there's there's rumors fly around every league yeah, right, yeah, about yeah, how yeah. many people yeah. are getting paid and this that and the other thing. But the one cool thing we've really um, owned out there is nobody gets paid. No, so like, and and that's a cool thing to be a part of when you see everybody showing up to the rink on their own accord and finding a way to get there. And when times are tough, they're still finding a way to get there. And, yeah. and it's, uh, you talk about family, it really pulls everybody in a little tighter. Oh, like, like when we were playing, Minnesota was a team that, that <laughs> I, I don't yes, want Yes, let's talk about Minnesota. I had no idea they had a hockey team. Yeah, Minnesota had Russ Houston and the rest of the U of A Golden Bears. And I heard this, yeah. 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 So they, they would... Uh, the, the Minnesotan Islanders. Yeah, so they played. They played in Minnesotan. Uh, they played some games on Onion Lake too. It blows my mind for people who don't know where Minnesotan is. Like, you, yeah, you, you, you want to talk about small town? Yeah, well, small reserve. I think it's yeah. a reserve, right? Yeah, it's, it's not a town. Na- it's first nation. First nation, yeah, nation yeah, yeah, spot, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. it is. I didn't even realize there was a hockey rink out there. Yeah, and I don't know. I, I it, it, and that's the the kind of the sad thing about it is I don't know what kind of hockey they have there anymore, and I, I hope that they didn't drain their their funds for minor hockey to, to support a whole bunch of guys that came in that had no connection to the community, you know? Yeah, like... <laughs> and, and you know what? And I've seen it before, and we'll kind of get into my, my other travels in senior hockey. Where well, I yeah, first... we can hop there. I mean, uh, you end up winning a second one in... In 07. In 07. Again, a, again a, a team that, you know, and a special team because we only lost one game all season. That was our first game of the round robin against Bentley. Did you win league that year? We won one league that year. Yeah, you did win league that yeah. year. Fair we, enough. We had, we had such a good mix that year, and and we had Aaron Foster. He just came back from pro, just a beast of a guy. Yeah, nicest who will be guy. A, who will be a guest on this show here soon enough. Oh, and it's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Just don't get the big guy riled up because <laughs> I remember like, watching him. Yeah, he he gets riled <laughs> up there. Ain't and, and another guy that is big and nice and one of the sweetest guys I've ever met is Ray, Ray Nielsen. A yeah, big, big Ray again, Ray. Don't get him riled up because uh, you can't hold the big guy back. And uh, but in 07, we had a special team. We had a, a goalie by the name of Corey McEachern, who was the price of admission not just for what he did on the ice, but Corey put on a pretty good show a while away from the rink too. So and it was a little stressful at sometimes for management. <laughs> I won't get into that, but it was stressful at management. And, and we just loved the guy to death. Kent Staniforth was the head coach. Uh, you know, and we had a couple of young guys. My name is Cole Fern. And Kevin Lavalle that that came in, and they uh, they were just kind of that little spark we needed. Yeah, yeah, and just another group that all meshed yeah. together. Yeah, and Scott Hood, uh, you know, m- you know, one of the best senior hockey players I've seen, and uh, and I'm not just saying that because he's a good friend. They did have an interesting story about you oh, over in Germany, can't. or Poland, 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 Poland going, going yeah. through the uh, security. Yeah. <laughs> so do you want to tell it or should I? No, because, I, I really look forward to hearing you tell it. Okay, so we're, I think we're in Heathrow and we're, we're flying through and uh, Morgan Mann. So this is in <laughs> 01. And so when you won the Allen Cup, you they sent you to the Nagano Cup in Japan. But that year was an Olympic year. So instead they sent us to Poland to play against their national team and and had a traveling tour of Poland and you, you know what it, experience of a lifetime you, you get you get to travel up and down the highways of Poland the only bad thing is you saw most of Poland through the, the windows of a bus we didn't really get the you know tours you know we we went to Warsaw we went to Auschwitz which was an you know an experience that it's really hard to explain that how it touched you when you when you saw Auschwitz and you you, you saw the tragedy there um, yeah. and uh but uh, yeah, there was a lot of different stories in Poland, we, and uh, so we're coming back. And uh, Morgan Man likes to play a lot of jokes. On <laughs> and, and, and if you do have Morgan on the show, which we will, it, Morgan, I, I believe at ES Lair is a good, probably teaches the kids how to write good fiction because a lot of stuff that comes from Morgan is a lot of fiction. <laughs> So Morgan, if you're listening, it's all fiction. <laughs> but we're 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 at the Heathrow Airport, and I, I kind of left my my carry on a little undetended. You're not supposed to do that at airports, and especially around Morgan Man. So I didn't. He I knew he was up to something. Because he had a stupid grin on his face. So I get up to security, and there's a couple old ladies behind me, and we're kind of emptying all our bags, and you're putting into the little plastic container, and they empty out my bag, and there's uh, a Greek gay porn magazine. <laughs> in my bag and and on and Morgan goes oh my Mr. Buchanan what magazine is that 
and the little lady's beside me going, oh, didn't really, and she's kind of looked at me and looked at him and didn't really laugh, actually. How beat red did you turn on that? Pretty beat red. It was... <laughs> did the security at least laugh? They, they laughed. They, they, knew, <laughs> they knew after looking at Morgan that, yeah, this this was not my property. So, Oh, that's good stuff. Whenever you go on the road with a group of guys, yeah. and I always have been hockey guys, yeah. whenever you go on the group road with hockey guys, little shenanigans like that just make the road trip. is uh oh um he's the captain for the wainwright bisons now and i'm trying to think of his name uh creasy creasy yes yep. creasy and uh, his roommate at the time were good friends from junior a and and creasy uh kind of fell asleep the night before let's just say and and he had his eyebrows shaved off <laughs> <laughs> creasy didn't realize that we're flying through the air didn't look at a mirror and all that and then finally realized once he touched down in in edmonton that he had no eyebrows it took him all the way (laughs) so can you imagine his reaction adam was beyond pissed and uh yeah so yeah it was uh, it was an interesting ride home so So did he shave the other one off or did he draw one on I, i don't know what he ended up doing one eyebrow oh man that would suck yeah so that's there's some great stories in border kings uh you know what again it's so fun because not that long ago we had a reunion with the border kings and and it's so fun that you get together these guys and it's like you, you didn't skip a beat like you know it was like going back to 07 with some of those guys so when you did a reunion did you have all the years back or just the championship years well we try to do a little bit of both but it was mostly just the championship yeah, yeah. years well know? it's whenever you win a championship it's easier to get those guys together right those are fond yeah, memories yeah. i got one story one guy that 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 was part of our 01 team uh that people may or may not remember is jeff rosner okay jeff was legitimate tough guy a little scary tough guy okay and we, we we brought him in bill thon you know has since passed but bill thon brought him in knew that we could control the guy and so bill and jeff was part of the old one team came back and played some regular season games led out of saskatoon we got into a pretty good one against meadow lake and and and, and they they claimed that jeff uh was eye gouging one of their players here in a fight and uh, Don Proctor was the league president at the time. He calls me up and he says, "Yeah, we're gonna have to suspend Rosner." Metal Lake's claiming that they're that he was eye gouging, and I said, "Oh no, no, he wouldn't have done that. I was right there. I didn't see anything." Go, Are you sure? And I said, "Yeah, okay. Well, I'll take your word for it. Okay, we're not gonna. He gets one game. He's not gonna get any more than that. We're not gonna give him for eye gouging." So I phoned up Ros and I said, "Ros, you know what? You got one game. Oh, okay, good." So yeah, they're claiming you're eye gouging and everything. I said that's a bunch of bullshit. You weren't eye gouging. Oh no, I was. <laughs> that's that's Roz for you. So I I didn't ask. Well, I haven't had any. Maybe. How much does it pain, guys? Then not to have the Border Kings in town anymore. It it hurts me a lot. Because yeah. it's been now uh, what three years? Yeah, it was a slow decline. And you can't really put your finger on one thing, you know. It's, it's from the Chinook League got to a, to a level that was really hard to compete in. Yeah. Uh, to the core of players you lost, and and you know, not a slight against the players that play for the Border Kings, but when when we had that team from '01 to '07 and, and won what we won, the, the players really took ownership of it, and, and and they ran that team, and it was to a point where. I know you have some former Border Kings on the Hitman, and I don't, I don't want it, them to take it wrong, but when they came on board, they really didn't take ownership of it. You know, it was like, I, I want to be part of the team, but I don't want to put all the work into it. Yeah. And, and we had a lot of guys who put a lot of work into it, Corey Dallin, Greg Brown. Well, that's all one of guys, the yeah. interesting things about senior Yeah. is, and I probably take it to the stream, the boys out in Hillmont probably know that, I'm a... You play hockey out there, and and the dressing room has become part of my home. I probably treat oh, yeah. it better than my home, right? Yeah, on how yeah. I try to keep it clean and that kind of thing. Yeah. But take ownership now. You're on the board, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I get that, right? Taking yeah. ownership of a team because um, if you don't have the, you don't. It, nobody's getting paid to be no. sitting there 
doing anything. It, I, and I don't know actually how a junior A team runs uh, in the AJ or the yeah. SJ. I don't know if uh, who all gets paid and how that works. Yeah. But I know for the Hitmen specifically, nobody's paid. Yeah. So it's all volunteer hours. And so if you aren't paying attention to those details, it only takes one of those people to step away and then a second to step away, yeah. and then you lose a couple people, and yeah. pretty soon you're scrambling and not realizing half the jobs that were getting done. And uh, they were just – so I, I could kind of see that. But, man, they were – like I always say, like I, I remember being in the dressing room as a kid, and that's my fond memories. Hillmont didn't have a senior team. They lost theirs or folded in early 90s. I actually, we were, I was just talking to Brad Simons earlier. My only memory of the Hillmont All-Stars is a guy laying in the old Silver Dome with his leg broken in the ambulance oh, coming. No. That's the only memory I got. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the Border Kings, I remember them being good. I remember coming yeah. and watching the Allen Cup and Lloyd and yeah. – and uh, them being a powerhouse. When I got back from Finland, I came in that year they were hosting. And I came, and I probably came in too late, right? Like, they were a good team then. Yeah. And, uh, huh, you know, that was a team you you always wanted to, to lace well, up for. Yeah, you know what? And there, there's a lot of young kids that are me. They're on my team right now. Or, like, you know, like a Hunter Madonic, for example, that plays for the Hitmen. You know what? He really, he would really, you know, as much as he loves the Hitman. Oh, no, absolutely. The, I, you can't blame him for it, it right? He, he would love to play Border I bet you there's probably half a dozen players in the entire area that love come back and play for the Kings. Uh, I, man, the Chinook, I remember thinking it too when, when I first got back playing, like, the Chinook League is so much travel, especially yeah, when you get done playing your junior and, well, for me, college and everything else, right? Like, I don't just I remember thinking I don't know if I want to be back on the bus every weekend for two three four hours to play a game to hop back on drive another four hours back right like see that's a great thing like when when with Border Kings are going like we played against Metal Lake and North Battle for yeah you know and 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 it was so much the guys just wanted to be around each other you know yeah. and it was the hockey was part of it but you know it was just you know that family kind of thing and going to North Battle for playing there and then sitting at the casino and I can remember sitting <laughs> in the parking lot and. And Jason Clegg was playing for us back then. And, and, and Clegger, bless him, like great goalie, MVP in the Allen Cup in 01, but could not get him away from the tables. So he, we would have, I'm on a run, boys. Just going to have to wait. <laughs> well, we play tomorrow, Clegger. No, it's great. We got to go, boys. You got to have to wait. And so, yeah, so we waited for Clegger sometimes on the bus. <laughs> Pull up in the team bus yeah, to the yeah. casino. Oh, yeah. We That's did, awesome. Yeah, we did that all the time. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, those are those are those are good memories for sure. Yeah. Now, you, switching over, you do leave the Border Kings yeah. in 2010, I believe, yeah, right? Right yeah. around that, Care and you that. go to Paradise Hill. Yeah. And I didn't know this, so yeah. you're you're now out helping the Paradise Hill Hawks. Were part of the what would that have been in the North Sask? Yeah, North Sask River. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe uh, lead us down there because I mean now the Paradise Hill Hawks are a part of the uh, the Sask Elta, right? And now they, yeah. I mean they they left for a little bit there, and then they're back now part of our league yeah so another Clagger, mike Clegg, uh, who's a you know one of my best friends he he goes out there and he was playing in macklin left the border kings played in macklin then went out to paradise hill for a goalie there so he, you know he kind of knew i was kind of done with the kings and i'm just kind of at that point where i just kind of wanted to do something different and probably was even thinking about just not doing hockey and uh don proctor and pete clayton were running the team and uh, so they said you know what come on board you know you have some contacts you can bring some players in and, and they said to me, we don't care what you do. We just want to win. <laughs> so and I said, what do, you, what do you mean? Well, we have these rules in place, but nah, don't worry about it. So uh, Jordan Feuder, Ben Stokes, uh, Tyler Kress, uh, a couple of defensemen out of Saskatoon, uh, and they all had Paradise Hill addresses. And uh, so they, all they wanted to be – you no. realize right now there's going to be guys in that <laughs> from that league. Their blood is boiling. So Weasel, if you're listening, uh, and that's all they wanted to be is Weasel from Wahlberg. And, uh, and uh, you know, Weasel and I became pretty good friends since then. But at that time, we weren't the best of friends. Uh, but, yeah, so we, we did everything we could to win, and we did. And uh, at the end of the day, that's all that mattered to Paradise Hill. Now, didn't you go... Uh, I did, this was a new thing I found out this year too. I was talking to you about it earlier, uh, actually like six months ago. You guys took that team to White Court, didn't you? Or White White Horse? Or White? Not White yeah. Court, White Horse. So Sorry, we, yeah. Yes. We, so what happened is we we they I didn't agree with this, but they they wanted to go and, and Clager and all those guys they wanted to try and beat the Border Kings, so which is uncomfortable for me. So they want <laughs> they played senior AAA, and, and they and they they put a team together. And and thing is we had. 
we didn't have a lot of options for players. So we, we ended up going to the Calgary Rec League. And, and there's some pretty good hockey players that are right out of the dub that are just playing rec hockey that we convinced. Again, going back to that money thing, yeah, there was quite a bit of money in Paradise Hill that was spent that, that I was uncomfortable with. But that's, hey, they told we want to win. So, yeah, okay. So you went and scouted the rec hockey league in Calgary? <laughs> yeah, you know, back then you go on the internet and you kind of look at names and you kind of go, okay, yeah, he played dub. And, you know, so you, you contact a few and Clager contacted a few. We got a few in and we went up to Whitehorse and uh, played a good first game. I believe we won that one. And then the guys were, you know, Whitehorse is a pretty fun town, town, or town on a Friday night. And I think the boys had a little too much fun. And then the next night we were uh, we didn't have much left in the tank and uh, lost the second one. But we didn't want to play at home. We didn't want to see. We were kind of looking at. It. We didn't want the Border Kings to know what we have. Not like we didn't have a chance. You know, honestly, we 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 had a a terrible first game against the Border Kings, best of three, uh, and then lost a close one in the second one. So. This is like when I first started playing out in Hill one. This is this, I just can't imagine P Hill playing the Kings. Because when I was when I first went to Helmond, that was like who would win out of the Helmond and the Border Kings? And I was laughed. Get, well, I mean, I'm rah yeah. rah Helmond, but at yeah, the yeah. time you're still playing the Border yeah, Kings, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but you guys actually did that series and lost two zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah was, Kings still had it. Kings still had it. You know, it's still a deep team. You know, yeah. they they I think uh, they had the boys from Backland playing there. Uh, a couple of boys affiliates, and they had Doog still playing. Yeah, you know? yeah, Doogie. And you know, they just they were very deep team. So they they were tough to beat, and we knew that. So was it tough bringing in that many guys and trying to get them to play together? Like, oh, were, yeah, like because I mean, just it completely went against what the Border Kings were about. Yeah, you know, and and, and we're almost to a point where we we're talking about Minnesotaquin moments ago, and, and almost to a point where it was Minnesotaquin slash Paradise Hill because we didn't spend as much money as on Minnesotaquin, but we put together a team that we thought would be competitive and the only way we could do is by doing it that way is by doing it that way yeah yeah, yeah. huh well isn't that something well you've just rattled half the north the north <laughs> river league into so what are you gonna do suspend me so <laughs> <laughs> well and then now you i guess you know moving forward now you've been the gm of the junior b team now for well, yeah. 2012 i think right yeah, seven yeah, years yeah, yeah, yeah. you think you're ever gonna retire from that yeah you know what it might be one day uh last few couple of days <laughs> kind of leaves a guy going ah is this really worth it uh but you know what i i really enjoy it uh the the, the kick i get out of it is is, is the kids and 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 seeing these kids grow up and I, even on the hillmont team is it, seeing the way hills and the reniers and the hunters and and mike mckay and, and, and see them you know and, and make me feel a little old because then you, you you see them grow up and they have kids and they're having families and it's like it's pretty cool. And, yeah, absolutely. Well, know, and that's what I enjoy out of it. It's and and get to see them, you know, and, and you know, hopefully I get out to Hillmon and watch maybe Friday and, and enjoy the game. So yeah, yeah, we got we got to tell. I keep forgetting about this. And we get talking yeah. about the Kings and then P Hill and everybody yeah, else. Yeah. But in the middle of that, you get an offer to yeah. go out to Vancouver. Like, are we just going to glaze over that? I mean, we're talking about the Vancouver yeah, we're kind of wish you, yeah, in, a, in a way, it's kind of a thing that's, you know, I don't want to say it's hard to talk about, but I, I, I know I'm still kind of in broadcasting. And, and I, I what happened in 04, it was, uh, I want to, I don't even know when it was, probably about April or May. And I have a friend that was working at All Talk uh, News and Sports Radio Station in Vancouver and, and kind of called me up and said, hey, we got an opening. I really didn't know what the opening was, and it was on air. And I yeah. said, it's a sports job. Yeah, what absolutely. the heck? It's Vancouver. And, and the thing is, I was so focused at TV at the time. Didn't do, I did radio, but not as much. There was more focus on the TV side of things. So I didn't do a lot of radio. You just did the odd cast here and there, and you, you read for a minute and a half, and you didn't really think anything of it. So this is before the chuck wagons and all that. And so I get an offer. I, they, I, so I get my resume taped together, send it off, and, and then they say, oh, you got – you know, and we got your tape, we liked it and everything. Like, do you have time for an interview over the phone? I said, yeah, sure, what the heck. So um, about a week later, do the interview over the phone, and then they call me back a couple of days later, said, you know what, really like it, we want to make you an offer, can you come out to Vancouver? And I was like, oh, you got to be kidding. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, honestly, I, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm from Lloyd, like, what the hell, you know, you're not really thinking, you're, you're, you're so mindset that where you're from. Absolutely. Where, <clears throat> why would, a Vancouver station be interested in me. You don't think about the experience you have or anything like that. You're like, okay. 
So they, they so me and the wife flew out to Vancouver uh, on a Friday. Had the interview that Friday night uh, at the station. Uh, it went really well, and they said, you know what, going to have an offer for you. Uh, we got a rental car for you, uh, just to kind of check. I think you should go and try to find some place that you want to live here. So like, awesome. That's kind of where it went south. <laughs> So driving around Vancouver, and uh, this is well before Google Maps and anything that we got. I can drop an F-bomb now. We got so fucking lost that I, I thought we ended up almost at the U.S. border. And, and, and honestly, and we were, me and the wife were ready to choke each other out. And, uh, and we were in she point where, like, how are we going to live here? So we're... Kind of, you know, kind of thought, you know, we're going to give it a try. So we kind of kind of left Vancouver thinking that's what we're going to do. I mean, the plane ride home, though, is where we kind of thought, you know, kids were young at that time, involved in sports, had a lot of kids, a lot of friends, and I had it's still a real good connection with the community, doing a lot of stuff in the community, and it just didn't know how we could do it. And uh, so I touched down in, in Lloyd and phoned him back about two days later and said, no, I can't take the job, sorry. So that was, that you was, know, and, and the job it, was, I should tell, the, the job was a very good friend of mine is Reed Wilkins, who he worked with me. And yep. So it's pretty well the same job Reed has. It would have been pregame, postgame for the Canucks. You're, you have a late night talk show. Uh, well, not late night, but uh, six to nine. And, and so and you would have most of your summers off. Dream job. Hey, if it makes you feel any better, I couldn't have. Uh, I couldn't cheer for the Canucks either. So. Well, and the thing is, I missed. I missed. If I would have been out there, I would have been there for the burning down of downtown. That's so. right. <laughs> you would have got to really record something. Eh? So, uh, so I, I, I came back then, and I, I can remember sitting, and no slight against the Blazers at the time because I was a PA announcer and everything, and and I, I was doing setting up to do post game. And I was like, and I had some, I don't even know who a player it was, and doing an interview with a junior hockey player that couldn't put three t- words together, you know, and, and I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? And uh, so I, in the back of my mind is like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And then, then I go on TV, and I do my late night cast, and, and I read everything, and I do the highlights, and I get off, and I don't even remember what I just did. And, uh, you couldn't even you could ask me who won and I like no not a fucking clue so we're doing Border Kings and doing and I was doing Border Kings at that time and it was just to a point where I decided I, I want to do something different yeah step away so I, I asked management at that time I, I want to go into sales and I was, I was told no sales isn't for everybody Bucky we need you on air and you know and I said no like seriously <laughs> said, don't don't pass by on this like I want, I want to go into sales and of course sales is what I've been doing now for for how long and I've been in there for for now six years so yeah. uh, so at that time they said no no you, you know we appreciate you wanting to but I think you're better off on air so I, I kind of called their bluff and I said no I'm, I'm done so I gave my notice just before Christmas and was done and then went into uh, sales outside sales for TELUS and uh, Midwest Communications and yeah and enjoyed that and then kind of did a little bit of oil field and then kind of circled back to to the media because I, I was doing a gloves off show with Moses uh, Moses uh, Waldo and um, <laughs> I, I Google so I YouTube yeah oh, I, God, I YouTube yes. and oh, I don't. Google everyone just yeah, yeah. to see what pops up yeah, and yeah. that gloves are off pops up right yeah. so I'm like oh heck I'll give it a click right Oop, what would you look at that there's there's Greg and yeah. Jay on there my brother right? oh yeah yeah 2013 oh my god huh Moises ass, you guys. They just ranked the Oilers number three as Stanley Cup contenders <laughs> with Eberle, Hall, Nugent Hopkins. Yeah. I don't know if there's one other. Yeah. And I'm laughing. Schultz probably, yeah. I'm laughing because I'm like, holy man, if you could only see where that team was going, right? <laughs> it was in the shortened lockout season. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Right? So they, they did make a little bit of a stink partway yeah. through, but they never, you know, not enough of a stink. Yeah. So maybe I should be asking, you know, as they're searching here, let's get on a fun topic. They, they're looking for a GM right now. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't take that. You wouldn't take the Oilers GM job? Uh, you, you know why? Because I, I as, as a guy looking outside, looking in, I think there's too many hands on the steering wheel. So 
I, I really honestly, and I don't know if a lot of people agree with this, and I, and I, and I talked to Reed about, Wilkins about this, and, and, and I said, how involved is Kate's? I always, always wondered about that. Because I, you hear a lot of stories that, yeah. of draft picks, yeah, that he was, he was influential on draft picks. So why the hell, and I don't know about you, but Kate's doesn't look like he's a real hockey guy. <laughs> well, actually, I always go, uh, the, the Cal Nichols group that purchased the Oilers. Yeah, yeah. If you look at their track record of how they turned that team around mm-hmm. and where they got to with picking up Pronger, making a Stanley Cup Finals. I mean, obviously, they had yeah, to trade yeah. him away and then yeah. selling. Yeah, yeah. Since they sold that team, I might be speaking out of turn here, but no, I'm pretty sure they only made the playoffs one year, and that was two years ago. Yeah, when they had the run. When they had the run. And other than that, they have not been anything yeah. at all. And one of the biggest changes has been ownership. Yeah. I don't know. That could be coincidence for all I freaking know, right? But it, it's 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 a job they have to have the right guy in for, and and, and really, and out of the two guys they're looking at right now, I I think Kelly's probably the best cho- choice, you know, knowing Kelly Me, Kelly McCrinnum. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, there the thing coming out right now is that uh, Keith Gretzky has been doing a great job, and I'm putting that in parentheses. Yeah. My brother Dustin is losing his absolute mind right now. I can't I can't see how. That works, honestly. I don't see how that works because again, it comes down to what's his influences. You know, the, when when Wayne comes and talks to him, and when Wayne talks, you better listen. But within reason. But when Daryl Cates talks, I don't think you listen. I don't know. I mm, them damn Oilers. Like I've been just a diehard for so long. I just want to. Why can't they just win? Like, why, why can't they get in the playoffs? Why can't they just... You know, you got the best player in the world sitting on your team. So what, what's your window of, of winning now? And that, when, you have, uh, when you have 97 in the lineup, and, and I know I, I hate when people say this, but you kind of almost kind of wondered, what's your window? Because he's going to want to win. And, and, he, and how patient is he going to be through all this? Because right now they're a one-line team. They have maybe a legit, maybe one or two defensemen. Legit, and, and then they have questions if they're healthy. If they're healthy, and they have questionable goaltending. Yeah. So, know. so you have out of that whole that whole team, you have maybe five legit players. I was saying, I said the same thing to Shep last week. Now, at NHL it takes maybe a smidge longer, but if you put the right people in place, they can turn it around awfully quick. Now, I'm not saying next year, but no. I'm saying in the next couple of years, it could be turned around. That's why this summer. Is so huge oh, for them, yeah. right? Like they got to pick the right guy, and they shouldn't take that lightly. So they shouldn't just go, "Hey, Keith, you did a great three months here. Here's the job." Yeah. Now no. I'm not saying don't give him the job. I'm just saying you better do your homework here and make sure he's the right guy. And the other thing that they're not really talking about a lot now, is they they have needed GM. They're going to need a coach too. Yeah. Hitch is not coming back. They they absolutely despise Hitch. The players despise him, and and and, and his shelf life in any team is short. And with a young team, it's even shorter, and he's done. And and, and I know they're winning right now, and they're, they're getting a few wins together, but it's more the fear of God because they want to try to make the playoffs. But but Hitch, when they went through that dry spell, they despised him, and and they still do because he he's just a negative kind of guy. Hmm. I, I know he's a lot of people think that he's whatever, but he's not good for a young team, and not and a young team that doesn't do the right things. Well, they just, oh, man, they're just tough to watch right now. And I'm a fan. I want to watch. I want to watch every game, and I just find myself turning it off more times than not, even when they're in a decent game. They just they frustrated me for so many years now. Yeah, and the only thing I like is, is, is if they go to overtime. <laughs> you know? Oh, well, absolutely. The, 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 other, the other night when, when, the, when, they beat, when they beat the Rangers in overtime and it was 2-2, and I was going, geez, don't give up a goal here. Just get to overtime. Yeah, just get to overtime and let the kids play, right? Yeah, they yeah. win the draw and then they're, they're lights out. Yeah, and the Rangers did have a chance there in overtime. Yes, they you did. Know, they, yeah. they missed the net by not mu- mu- much. So yeah. it, you know, when, when 97's out there with dry saddle, it, it's pretty special. I was thinking, we still haven't – I wouldn't mind uh, – we've talked a, a lot about uh, the hockey side of things, but you've been around – the CPCA. Oh, yeah. I mean, we got to give it give it its due. I mean, I could have yeah, you yeah. on again just yeah, to talk yeah. probably about that. But I mean, I send out the tweet that I'm having you on. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I love yeah. this. So yeah, then yeah. I send out the tweet to fake Bucky Chucks. Okay. 
that I'm having you yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he responds quicker than you respond. Yeah. But you do respond right after. Yeah. So f- I, I don't want to give away the person that does fake Bucky Chucks, but let's just say he, he lives down in Regina. He lives down in Regina, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah. So, and he, he's a big chuck wagon guy. And, um, <laughs> you know, the ironic thing about when, when I first came to Lloyd, uh, I was told, okay, you're going to have to cover rodeo and you're going to have to cover chuck wagons. Okay, and my background, and we didn't get into that, but my background is the furthest thing from horses, furthest thing from rodeo. My dad was a chartered accountant, had some property. Uh, my mom worked in the premier's office. So like my friends would always say I was born with a silver spoon up my ass. And I, I pretty well was, you know, yeah. privileged. And so I was furthest thing from chucks and rodeo. So they told me, you have to cover rodeo and chucks. And I was like, I don't. Well, fuck. just add it to the list of... <laughs> volleyball and curling and baseball why not chuck so everything else so i I came to the community and and i got together with uh, bob and Rhonda phipps who ran the cca at the time and way back then uh, the cca rodeo finals were here and there was like a five days of rodeo at the civic center and it's a big thing it was a it was in the fall and it it, it attracted a lot of people to town and and i did a late night show with it on tv so we had a lot of fun that way so I, I, I hung out with them, did some rodeo specials. So I went on the road to these bull riders all the way down to Moose Jaw and Beachy, Saskatchewan. Oh, Beachy, Saskatchewan. There you, you go. hear about Beachy all the time. It's, you know what? It was so much fun. It was, here's the rodeo guys. Uh, they're bull riders, so they don't have a horse trailer. They're just basically in a, in a van. And Danny Tickle and a few other guys, a guy from Australia. And so they said, hey, meet me at the hotel. We'll, we'll We'll get you a videotape of you guys getting ready to go to the rink and everything and getting ready for the, for that the performance that night. So we get to the hotel, and I knock on the door, and there's like 10 guys staying in that room. And I said, well, so which rooms are you guys in? This one? So there's like six or seven of you. Yeah, I know. We're good. That is rodeo, guys. They'll get, you know, they'll get a hotel room, and about six of them will stay in it. So they'll go and check in with two of them. And the rest of them will stay in the van. And when they go and check in, all the rest of them pour into the room. So it's like, oh, my God, you guys. The stories the rodeo guys must have is oh, they're, they're a tough breed, man. They, they are tough. Uh, but but uh, the way they travel around in the summer is something else, too. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah I'll have to try and track down somebody to get on here to have, to talk deeper into that. Because yeah. that's a part of life that I want. Well, as far as Chucks go, I was saying, Chance, Ben's Miller Day. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've been to watch them. I yeah. grew up watching yeah. them, right? But I still don't fully understand all of it, right? Like, I I wish I sat here and could spew it off as good as you can now. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't grow up around it. So yeah. you just went and, yeah. you know, the fair comes around or the stampede in Calgary and yeah. you go watch the Chucks and lose yeah. a couple bucks on. <laughs> Who you're betting on. That's yeah, right, yeah. right? So, like, yeah. So, like, so just like I did with a rodeo, I, I, you know, got together with some Chuck Wagon drivers and, and I kind of hung out with them, got to learn the sport and. You know, so guys I, I met and hung out with was Brian Labacane was one. Yeah. Uh, Buddy Benz Miller is another yeah. one, and uh, and George Norman. Was How another. long did it take you to cl- pro- self proclaim yourself the fourth Benz Miller brother? <laughs> you know, I talked to a lot of people in the last couple of days, yeah, yeah, and the fourth yeah. Benz Miller brother came up quite a bit. <laughs> so you know, but they all said it was self self proclaimed. No, yeah, no. In the case of okay, when, when you, you you listen to me on Chuck Wagons and you listen to the CPC Radio Network. The, there's a lot of downtime. <laughs> so, as you know, on radio, you, when there's downtime, you have to fill. You have to fill, and, yeah. And, and, and sometimes I fill with stuff that's just off the top of my head, and sometimes it doesn't make any sense. So, <laughs> we're sitting in Calgary one night, and, and we're just filling time, and, and Jim Nevada, who's a great color commentator, and, and says stuff that I, I, I you know, honestly, we don't know what he's going to say. So, and I caught him off guard because I'm always trying to catch him off guard or something. And I said, oh, by the way, you, you know I'm the fourth Benz Miller brother. And he just kind of stopped. He looked at me. Seriously? I said, yeah. Can't you tell? <laughs> so, and it kind of grew its own legs. If you don't know the Benz Millers, they're both, they're, well, there's three of them. They're what? Six foot? Six foot four. And I'm about five, six and chunky. Uh, so, and, and. <laughs> So there's David, there's Kurt, there's uh, Chance, and uh, and Bucky, <laughs> and Bucky, Bucky Benz Miller, and the funny thing is, Buddy and Darlene uh, just love them to death, and and they have fun with it, and I know I, I when Kurt won a, a stampede, and, and they had they had uh, they had a reception for him at the Dewberry Arena, and I kind of emceed it, and and they brought me a, a box full of donuts, and but there was a few missing. They said sorry, Chance ate some. 
And so, like, <laughs> they said, you know, and they proclaim me as Buddy ben, or actually Bucky B- Benz, Bucky Benz, Bucky Miller. Benz Miller. Henceforth, so. if you saw the picture I put out, yeah, on that's my Halloween fate. picture. That's right, yeah, yeah. Bucky so I, Benz. So I got the Dewberry Mustangs jersey. Uh, it got the the hair that actually I stapled to a cowboy hat, so it's available any time for me to wear. But uh, yeah, so it's it's kind of funny that uh, and, and again, yeah, if you listen to me on CPC Radio, uh, we have a lot of fun, and I, we don't take anything too serious. It's but one thing that I have come to realize through all this, I mean, I have done a lot in media, I've done a lot in broadcasting, and there's so many people that come up to me and say, I. I I listen to CPC radio all the time. And, and it's like it's so cool when you have old people. That, and I had a, a great story where it, my wife's hairdresser I was telling a story of this lady that is a huge Chuck Wagon fan, but she can't go to the races. And, and, and because, you know, she's older and can't get up the stairs and, and just not, not comfortable. And she listens to every race and, and appreciates it so much. So, it, you know what? It, that's what it's all for. Yeah, absolutely. I heard uh, I was talking to. Uh uh, Mrs. Phipps, Wendy. Wendy oh, Wendy. Oh, yeah. yeah, Wendy. Yeah, yeah. And she was talking about you and Jim Nevada, or oh. something about the Calgary Stampede and losing bets and selling earrings. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so we have I have a quiz at the start of every broadcast with Jim, and sometimes it was Eddie Melville or Rio King, all depending who would come on. And uh, so, Jim won, and so he had to, you know, what do you want me to do? So at the Calgary Stampede, there's this uh, trade show building that show the trades or shows uh, art as well as sells jewelry and other stuff. So I had to go there and sell jewelry at this friend's booth. So I, I sold earrings, and he got mad because I sold a pair of earrings about two minutes after arriving there. So maybe a mystery calling. <laughs> hey? I, I could be selling earrings. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, yeah. Hoops, but, hoops, hoops. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Thoroughly enjoy it, and uh, you know there, there's it, it ends up being a long summer. Uh, and, and the thing that's what people don't realize is the personalities. And I'm and I'm not really talking about the drivers. I'm talking about the horses. They're 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 unique in themselves. And uh, you know, and for a kid that grew up in Regina, and and never saw a horse, and, and to hang out with them all summer, and and these guys are the salt of the earth kind of guys they're a little rough around the edges but love them to death and uh, you know we talk about family all the time with my hockey and, and it, i'm pretty blessed to have you know another family in chuck wagon racing you know and they're no different than hockey players uh you know and they both don't have great dental plans and they're they're, they're just great guys and yeah. you know and now I kind of went from just not being the radio guy, but being a vice president of the association. Yeah, uh, which I so. found out Chance is the president of the show. No, 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 Chance isn't. Well, no, I thought Chance. D- no, d- Chance is on the board of directors. Oh, board of directors. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, must yeah, have yeah, misheard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the, our president's Dennis Ringette. Uh, oh, okay, okay. D- Danny's uh, Danny's dad, but uh, yeah. So I've been vice president for for a couple of years now, and so you, you get. Uh, yeah, well, you're involved now. Yeah, like yeah, now, now I'm in. But that's been kind of your 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 mo since the beginning. Somehow you show up, you broadcast a game. Pretty soon you're <laughs> running the team, and yeah, yeah. So it's it's fun that way. And uh, my my my, I got a busy year. Like you know, my my hockey season starts in September. It, yeah. it ends. You know, you hope in April, but most of the time in in March or February, if it, depending on how everything goes. And then you have a few months off, and then come June. Uh, you're back into Chucks for three months, and then you have about two weeks off and back to hockey. So it's it's a BC schedule, but you know I've been doing it for 14 years. Uh, the 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 wife is a, is a marathon runner, by the way. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, you can see I'm not, but she is, and so she runs, you know, 10, 15 Ks, 20 K runs, does the Saskatchewan Marathon last number of years. So she does a lot of training like that, 12 months a year, and uh, I kind of go along and hang out and uh, pick up mcdonald's for lunch and then pick her up after she's done running so <laughs> oh frig well buck it has been an hour and 34 minutes wow yeah time's kind of flown by i was planning on getting to a bunch of other things and maybe what we'll just have to do is have you on a different time sure I, I, I'd part, hate to, part two part that's two. right i'd hate to hang everybody out here for two and a half hours but yeah, yeah. it's been really enjoyable having you in thank uh, you i appreciate you coming on the show thank you very much for yeah. having me well, thanks for coming Hey guys, thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Sean Newman Podcast. Next week, we have Harlan Lessick in studios. He is the owner of the Weekly Bean newspaper in town. Uh, he played overseas in Belgium and Switzerland. He actually just went back in 2018 for an alumni game, 50 years of the team he played for. 
Um, he played a little bit of time in the USHL in Sioux City, uh, Iowa. Uh, he was a former president of the Wild Goose Hockey League and did a little bit of play-by-play in Rosetown, among other things. And we'll get into all that next week. So stay tuned. Thanks.